source for the sports gamer. Welcome back, sports gamers. It's the natural. Just got some big info today on scouting in Madden 22. I'm here with my main man, Four Verts. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, I'm ready to talk about the scouting update. It's pretty much the biggest update we've been waiting for here this offseason. Yeah, for sure. Um, also, they mentioned a couple of things about the franchise stuff. Mostly that's already been covered. Um, but let's kind of talk about it a little bit. They said, uh, we already know we're getting a new franchise hub. But if they're saying it's the most complex screen Madden has ever had. There's a lot going on there. And I think... Um, when you talk about the onboarding experience for new users, that's probably going to be the steepest curve for people to kind of figure out. Um, we've been used to navigating in one way for so long. Uh, I, I know during the beta, and, and I don't know how you felt about it, but during the beta, it was it was a lot to take in at times. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to work on some tips for you guys to get you through. Uh, a lot of stuff is new and it's in depth, and uh, you know you want to get the best out of your team. And especially if you're in a multi-user franchise, that they say, or I say online CFM, you want to get get up on your uh, your opponent, uh, you know, and, and build your team a lot faster than they are. Um, so speaking of uh, speaking of building a team, they stated that they're actually uh, increased the size of the franchise team, and a lot of designers who love franchise got the chance to work on the mode this year. And we've seen a lot of that if you you followed along on social media. We saw it in the video uh, of the announcement today, but you saw Andre up there, or as many of you know him, Swami, Swami. kind of repping franchise out there, and he's been the one most notable. Um, if you guys have followed along, also Deuce Douglas. Uh, is now part of the EA team. Um, and they've added a couple others in the background people may not be as familiar with, but the team has definitely grown and they've really uh, really enforced it with people that love franchise. And I think this year is definitely a direct result of that love for the mode. Yeah, and uh, speaking of YouTubers uh, like Swami and Deuce, um, they stated that they actually do listen to YouTubers and the YouTube comment section, which is no surprise to me. I've been telling you guys that for years, but they came out and kind of said it. So, well. Yeah, so hey, EA, if you're listening to us right now, uh, no, just <laughs> kidding, or am I? Uh, no, they, it's true, right? And, and so they talked about, right, Sean Grady mentioned that that's where he tends to go. Um, Andre mentions he tends to be more of a, a of a Twitter guy, and I think that's the reality is they, they get the feedback from everywhere, and as Andre put it, um, if you tend to tag EA somewhere in there, it usually finds its way back. Yeah, I thought it was funny they asked about one of the favorite modes in it, and they said game planning and the talent trees. I don't think anyone actually named scouting when it was supposed to be about scouting. I yeah, that, that, that would make it a little awkward. They probably wish they could have had that one. <laughs> All right, so they add, so getting right into uh, the scouting, uh, and then they added a ton of complexity to this. Um, you know, and now currently when you do that, you know, they have these key decisions at different points in the season where you're interacting or where you're getting to um, the scouting, and that's all based upon you have scouts now, four area scouts and a national scout that you have to manage. Yeah, and those those scouts have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, one thing to note that that people are are probably going to be happy about um, the old scouting point system is gone, right? So no longer do you have 175 points a week or whatever it was. Um, that's been completely scrapped. So don't feel like you know if you don't do something week to week, you're going to lose it. That's not there anymore. Um, these scouts um, all are going to have their own strengths and weaknesses, and I think that's going to be a real kind of strategical play for how you build your scouting department. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and then they have it kind of broken down into those different regions. Uh, and I'll have the screenshot up for you guys there. National, uh, Western, Central, Northeast, and Southeast. Um, and then depending on, you know, what the projects, the prospects are in that area, that's where you want to kind of focus and send your, your area scouts to. And they didn't get into a lot of detail of that, but they did kind of allude that certain areas may offer um, various benefits and, and whatnot. So I think that'll be something to watch uh, as we go forward here. Um, it, it, and really you talk about those scouts, the, the level and the quality of the scouts going to be a big player here. There's going to be tiers there. Um, and you're going to make sure you put the right scout in the right place to get the most out of what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, and I like the point they were saying that um, with the tier scout, it's not about who's the best. I got a three tier versus a one tier. It's really about picking the best scout for you. Now, if you're a running team, you want to get that scout who's the focused on running backs or backs. Um, if you're a passing team, that scout uh, more guys focused on receivers or quarterback. So I think it's not about who's the best scout. It's about who's the best scout for your team. Exactly. They all have their own expertise. Um, fun fact here, they, they alluded that there's actually two expertise 
uh, for each scout. Um, the second one's going to be grayed out here at launch, um, but they mentioned that it'll come into play with the feature down the road. Um, I would probably guess that's going to tie back into coaching staff somehow, maybe um, an unlockable extra expertise for your scouts. We'll have to see, but uh, there's a little bit of an Easter egg there for you. Yeah, looking forward to that. Um, but on the scouting as well, you have to, one thing I thought was cool is that you have the area scouts, but you also have that national scout. Um, so you send the area scouts to different areas to scout the players that you want. And these players during the season, collegiate season, can actually go up on the board and the board's almost like a media board so as they play better they get more press and media and then they you know go up the board but i would throw it so cool that the national scout if you send your national scout to scout the media is aware that they'll be attending that player's game and it'll, it'll draw some kind of news coverage yeah there's there's a lot to unpack here right so the big board as we know it um, is kind of gone. Now what you're looking at is more of a media-based board, right? And that's really when you think of mock drafts in real life. You're really thinking about how the media perceives people versus um, how teams are actually perceiving them. We find out later on that teams in the media really are, are not in line there. But you know, as you pointed out, the national scout is going to be this, this thing that moves uh, players' value up and down the board. Um, as well as um, various storylines throughout the season. You know, if they have a couple good games in a row, that you'll see them climb the media's board and whatnot. Um, so you can almost create like this self-fulfilling prophecy where somebody, you know, a, a guy gets on a good run and then one guy sends a scout there and then another guy and all of a sudden uh, people will see this guy projected super, super high, but maybe he's not. You know, all these guys go there, check him out, decide he's not very good. And, you know, the, the media is going to have him way high and people that didn't scout are going to maybe take him early. So there's yeah. a lot of gamesmanship there that I think, you know, offers a lot of interesting ideas here, especially for 32 man franchises. Yeah. Plus, uh, yeah, the fact they're in that they also have private workouts. So you're trying to keep your scouting on the low. I'm not sure if they'll put that in the media or not, because in real life they, they do, you know, someone comes in for a, a workout. But uh, I, I'm interested they have the private workout stay private so if you got this sleeper on your board you don't want to send a national scout to him you want to bring him some private workouts to kind of fill out uh you know your put you know what you have for him all the all the ratings and stuff yeah, so the national scout is, is going to be the, the high profile guy but the regional scouts will kind of get you where you want to be on somebody um and then you can finish them off with the private workout so if you really think you have a gym you probably don't want to send that national scout there to check that out you probably want to you know maybe use um that that regional the private workouts and that that's where i talk about like that gamesmanship i think there's a little more strategy because yeah. scouting is going to be something that plays out more in line with the rest of your league so speaking of scouting one big thing swami said i make sure i got the whole quote here because it was it's a few things we could talk about here he stated you can see this guy is fast or this guy has a big arm but it does he doesn't have the mental process or awareness for our game's sake so he's not going to be that guy and I'm thinking, first of all, uh, you know, the simple simpleness of the, the former scouting, uh, the, you know, how they system that they had. All you had to look for is the fact, all, all you needed was combine numbers. Because you're drafting the fastest guy and, you know, you maybe knock off a point or two, you know, uncover a point at rating or two and you're good. Um, but now he's saying the intangibles matter, but that's more to a gameplay thing. Because really, if a quarterback has 99 throwing power, it really not matter if he has 40 awareness, right? I mean unless this is a gameplay change where awareness is starting to matter for different positions. Uh, are, are we going to see guys with like 30 awareness come out, right? Like, are you going to see your, your Jamarcus Russell come out? That's got all the physical traits, right? But, but he's got that 30 awareness. So he can never actually like hit those physical traits or even some of the, you know, skill traits that will be really interesting to see there. You know, they brought up awareness a couple times. There was another time that I didn't catch the exact quote, but they mentioned awareness earlier. Um, in the stream as well. So I, I do think awareness is going to come into play here. That's interesting. So to look out for the gameplay. Uh, but uh, scouting as well, uh, That the, like you're saying, the scouts have a, a specialty and then, you know, there's a range of talent this year, you know, from they don't, you don't have the dead on lock uh, like you did previously. Now there's a, a bigger range, so it's harder to kind of nail down that guy. Yeah, it, that range is going to be a big deal because we talk about, um, okay, this guy is probably the 6th to 20th best rating or rated player, right? Or he, he may be the 30th to 40th. Um, as you get deeper in the draft, though, they're giving you a little more flexibility so you can find some of those sleepers. So they talk about when you fully scout a guy, you know, maybe in the third round, he could have a range between 50 and 100. And, and so you don't know, okay, is the guy more 100? Should I wait around? Is he more 50? Should I go up for him? Um, I think especially later on, that really emulates really what, what the whole kind of quasi- thoughts around scouting are you know that first round everybody really kind of knows who the first round guys are 
uh, but it's that second, third, fourth, and later where yeah, where the evaluations on guys really differ. That's where, like, real life, that's where GMs make their money, right? I mean, everyone knows those those first round lock guys, but can you get a gym in the fifth? Um, so one thing I like is somebody who pretty much uh, does a great job uh, usually uh, in his CFMs and online CFMs. I play. I'm pretty much. I, I've actually never missed the playoffs and. Long been playing Madden. But oh, look at that humble stay, brag. They humble say brag. that the postseason, now you can focus on your playoff game, and then after, the focus goes back on scouting. So while you're making your push for the Super Bowl, you don't have to worry about scouting. Yeah, this this is a big thing, and it's, it's not even just that. Think about this for a second. The scouting tab never closes. You heard that right. The scouting tab never closes closes and that's a huge deal because for years people said why can't i why can't i scout in the the preseason why can't i scout you know during the playoffs why can't i scout you know week one of uh free agency the scouting tab never closes and that may be one of the biggest updates to this because it's so frustrating if you are out of the playoffs or you know you are doing preseason and your league doesn't get through being able to still scout being able to still do something is such a welcome addition to the mode yeah, every week, you know, and sometimes franchise people get so frustrated or just bored that it wasn't a lot to do, something to do every week besides just training. But now scouting is open every single week. Beginning preseason week one, scouting is open. And also the fact they added that if you don't do the scouting, the CP will, st- for guys who are not into it, uh, you know, CP will still kind of usher you along, uh, even though you're not going to get the most out of it. And that's kind of the the nice thing about this addition, right, is you want to make it accessible, um, but you still want to reward those people that put the effort in, right? So the CPU is going to do it. It's just not going to be kind of tailored to what you'd want it to do, right? Like it's not going to focus on what you really need. Maybe it may just do something general. Um, Those that really put in the effort are probably going to find the the reward to be higher, but it doesn't take you out of it if you don't actually want to touch it and and do that uh, mode for you. For sure. And one last thing they mentioned that I thought was pretty cool. Um, not just more general focus on the mode that live service should be able to add user stories to some things during the season. So what it launches with, we know scouting is coming later, but we also have some other things coming during the year. Um, you mentioned some tiers type thing with the coaches that's going to be unlocked there. So it's not just what it launches with what's on the disc. Also, we got updates coming that should improve the game and the depth of the game uh, as it's out. They fully embrace franchise as a live service, right? So think about how Ultimate Team is this live service. They get updates constantly. Um, it sounds like they're going to go back to kind of the, the same model they used last year, three major updates with some minors in between. Um, they even hinted at that this may not be the only large feature set added to the game this cycle. So, you know, you franchise fans out there understand that it, it's not a matter of the game not being done. It's a matter of the game's constantly just going to keep getting better. And that's something we should all be looking forward to here as we roll through Madden 22. All right. Appreciate having you on. Catch you next time. If you appreciate our content and all the work we do to bring you guys the latest news, tips, and gameplay from your favorite sports games, drop a like, subscribe to SGO today. You want to take your game to the next level? Then join SGO Insider.